Stambana combinations. Okay. Pros and grass. Because I told, I mentioned the stambana, so I have uh -huh. to explain it. Because otherwise, I'm not doing justice. So okay. these are the frozen graha combinations. So here it says the sixth graha in weekday order is the cause uh -huh. of freezing. So what did I do? I took the weekday order of planets: Sunday, uh -huh. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. After that, I added Rahu Ketu, Rahu Ketu. Like okay. So that's the simple way. You first do the order from there in weekday order. This is the standard order. Somebody's okay. going to ask me, what is the basis of the weekday order? So it's, it, there's a basis of that derived from the speed of planets. All right? Okay. Do you, can we do it? Let me see. Moon is the, slow, is the fastest planet, right? Yes. Okay, let, let me go to the slowest. Slowest is here, right? All yes. Right. So let me see. If I now count from here, uh, I have to count... Include just exclude Rahul Ketu. I'm going to yes. count five from here, right? Saturn yes. is the slowest, so I'm going to find the next slowest. One, exclude these. Two, yes. three, four, five. It doesn't work. No, 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 no. So maybe I made this did it wrongly. Let me try. Maybe it's sixth. Should we try sixth? Let's try. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, Jupiter. He's the next slowest planet, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Let's try sixth from him. One, yes. two, three, four, five, six. Yes, it's Mars. It works. Oh. Mars is the one next in line in speed. Yes, 45. Okay, let's yes. try for Mars. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's right. Sun is next in speed. Correct? Yes. Perfect. So, okay. Let me try again. After the Sun, I should get Venus, right? Let me try. Yes, one, obviously. two, three, four, five, six. It works. Yes. Finally, let's try from here. We should get Mercury. One, two, three, four, five, six. It is. Perfect. Next will be moon, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah. Perfect. So the the so that so if I knew the speed of the planets before this, I could actually do the similar thing with the speed of planets to derive this weekday order. Uh -huh. so people ask, what is the derivation of the weekdays, the seven weekdays? I will uh -huh. say the speed of the planets are taken. That we know okay. physically from the universe what their speeds are. We can see it and measure it. We don't need anybody to justify anything. And from there, I can take the order of the speeds of planets and from there, from a certain count, I can derive the weekdays. Yes. Once I've derived the weekdays, I say, there are some other grahas in, important also. Rahul Ketu. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Vedic astrology says use them. We will use them. Now, in that new table... I will then do this. Take the graha okay. and count to the sixth from it. That okay. will be the one who causes it to freeze. Oh, so okay. From the sun now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Venus. So I put Venus over there. Okay. Now from the moon, sixth. One, two, three, four, five, six. Saturn. Put Saturn over there. Yes. Now, after that, the list is easy. Down we go. If this is right, I said... Mars gets frozen by Rahu. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I've derived it. There it is. Peculiar list. Peculiar list. So uh, this one. Venus and Moon joined. Venus gets frozen by the Moon. Okay, so yeah. oh, this is if it is joined or aspected? Joined is going to be working. Aspected will be working as well. And what if it is in signs like Jupiter is in Leo, then this doesn't work. Because there you said if you Mars... Heard that Ju when Jupiter is in Leo, the person should not marry? Transit-wise? That year, no Mohurtas are there for marriage, they say. Okay. Okay. Jupiter does not have enough glue that year to bind oh. people. I, I didn't get this. What I was asking is you said last time that if Mars is in Aquarius, then also you can consider it a Stambana. Yes, and you just asked, Jupiter and Leo, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So we say that during transits, during Gocha oh. transit, if Jupiter is in Leo in okay. the sky, then that year is not good for marriage. Oh, okay. So then I just, then I explained, you, you said, how about Jupiter and Leo? I said, look at Jupiter and Leo in transit. The Mohuta books will say that year is not good for marriage. Why oh, do they say? Yeah. The glue is not working. The sun has caused Stambana to Jupiter. Oh. <laughs> okay. 
But that's for marriage matching, and I mean marriage muhurtas. In a birth chart, I wouldn't worry about Jupiter and Leo. It's actually a very nice combination, but not so much for spirituality. Okay, it can okay. it can inhibit the person in spiritual growth, but don't take uh, don't go deep into this as from the car perspective. There can be other things which build spiritual growth. What I would do in such a chart is I'd see how is this affecting the person? Which house is it from Lagna? Which house is it from the other grahas? Okay. Oh. Yes, these planets freeze, or we call them. They they're the ones who really fight the grahas. They really fight the oh. grahas. It makes the grahas unable to work properly. The reason oh. I have to give this list is because these are singular planetary combinations, which if you do if you miss, you would you would actually would not be able to solve the problem. Like that Mars Rahu case that I just mentioned. Correct. All right. So. Now, where you would find this pro uh, peculiar is sometimes Sun and Venus are joined. Oh, okay. Most sometimes of the time. Sometimes Jupiter and Sun are joined. That's sometimes, that's uh -huh. actually considered a good combination for some things. Uh -huh. It's very good uh -huh. for some things. Imagine Venus Moon, it's supposed to be a huge blessing. Yes, Gemini Raj Yoga is, I think, one of them. It is. It works also that. For Moon, it's good. For Venus, it's not. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so whatever Venus loads in the chart is under problem. Moon, whatever Moon loads in the chart is fine. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So we'll have to differentiate very carefully with these. And one thing I want to ask you here, suppose uh, the planet which is giving Stambana, uh, apart from the conjunction and aspect, it is in the 12th, suppose. From so Venus. Suppose, uh, yeah, for example, suppose Moon is in the 12th from Venus. Mm -hmm. So then would you still say this is giving Stambana because... No, no, no it's not. Okay. No. But uh, let us say Venus is in second house and Moon is in twelfth house. Okay? okay. And Sun is in Lagna. Uh -huh. Then Sun is suddenly fi fighting Stambana, Venus and Moon. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then we have to check Venus in that chart very carefully because Venus is the one who will suffer the stumble. All right. Okay. Because it has been uh, getting this through moon. It's okay. A, got it. It's a yoga on that same house. Okay. When this happens, you have to strengthen the, pre, the, the planet in the first column. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Now, let. Uh, do you want to take a small break or should we move on? Either way you decide. <laughs> I am good, you know that. Yes, I am also good to go. <laughs> now, here is another chart. I have uh -huh. to show you some more examples, right? Yes. <laughs> and uh, let me see here. You see, in our tradition, we don't teach anything without examples. So, Fantastic. Now, this is uh, Maria Elizabeth. I'm just going to make the screen smaller. There we are. Maria Elizabeth, Archduchess of Austria. The reason I use these charts is because, firstly, they are available in Astro Data Bank. They're people oh. with very privileged lives, very well documented lives. Um, I had clients' charts where I could justify these principles, but I would I really not be doing a, a good service to my clients, right? Mm -hmm. So, so generally, it's very nice to go through examples which are readily available online and for public view. Now, uh -huh. in this chart. There is this, there's this event that is happening. Jupiter is in a Kendra. Nice. Okay. And the reason I picked this up is because I thought, well, I need to see what makes this person royal. Okay. Remember I said Yatma Karka is the one who gives yes. kingship. All right. Royalty in general is also given by the Yatma Karaka. And this person was picked up to be a potential queen of France. Wow. They were supposed to marry the king of France at the time. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, they say if Jupiter is in Kendra, it gives great Raja Yoga. And this is Atma Karak in Kendra. Fantastic Raja Yoga is supposed to be experienced. And the person is supposed to emit exceptional skill set. Okay. Exceptional. Okay. And we see here, however, Jupiter is afflicted by Saturn. Rahu is also aspecting. Yes. What do you think of the sun over there? Sun, it's quite far, I guess, so I don't take it as a very... It's not combust. Jupiter is not combust is what your yes. point is, which is smart. 
I remember this list. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Jupiter's son. Okay. Jupiter is on the stambana, frozen. Ah. So it's oh, like three okay. blows now. Three blows, severe blows. Oh yes. my god. Otherwise, normally I would say, okay, this may not be so bad. All right. Now, okay. this is all supposed to be denying her of the great Raja Yoga she's supposed to experience, the kingship she's supposed to experience. Oh, okay. Have a look at the Venus now. Ah. Secret from Venus, the plot thickens. Oh, okay. <laughs> So because of this, she will not be able to get married. That's what you are That's saying. That's right. Her Raja Yoga is denied. Okay. And with the denial of the Raja Yoga is also marriage denied. Okay. Both are being denied. Okay. So I'm supposed to give the prediction. It looks like this person is going to fall from grace. Mm -hmm. in matters of their, of their power and position. Okay. And this is also going to inhibit them from marrying. Okay. Okay. So my objective would be if I were given this, apparently they don't have good court astrologers back then in, in 1700. And, uh, and uh, so I would have said, Oh, look, your Jupiter is under Stambana. It's under a curse. Please do this mantra for the guru. Okay. Okay. Do 10 malas a day. You have to do it a certain amount of time, etc. about for three years. Uh, you have to do some sadhana for guru, three malefics, three years. After oh. that, you will be completely overcoming this and you will overcome the tribulations you have in marital life as well as career. Must be okay. done. Once that's done, life is good. Okay. Now, what is the problem? Jupiter lords what in this chart? It lords the second house and fifth house. <clears throat> ah, correct. So maybe Jupiter second house could be having something to do with uh, teeth. Can that be teeth, face, speech, right? Okay. Could also be family. Uh -huh. Fifth house, we say that when you have to date a person, the first dating and courting comes from fifth house. So loving, you know, wanting to court. And uh, so what happened in her case was, is that she got this disease of smallpox. Okay. And uh, the result of this was a significant scarring of her face. Okay. Oh. Now, because of that, the king of France decided not to marry her after all. Oh, and not only did that happen, she did, remained unmarried throughout her life. Okay, very unfortunate case that the appearance should have to de have to affected her. But back then, it was it was considered quite important because of her uh, because she was going to be a public figure. So because of that, she, she did not evolve uh, to to uh, to have the queenship of France. Otherwise, she was the main prince. She was the Archduchess of Austria. She was supposed to be a princess of Austria. Okay. So here the teeth and this fifth house appearance thing that is coming. You know, where I think there was one, there was another problem also. Okay. They didn't, but they didn't say, or that, or something, something else was there. I I can say that this is their excuse. All right. Okay. Why? There is something we call Upapada, the Aruda of the Twelve. Now. Yes, yes. It is pivotal to ma for marriage that this Upapada is all right. Okay? Okay. And uh, you'll notice that if I draw it, the Upapada, I I'll count from 12th house to the 12th lord, yes. same distance they're from is here. Yes. If I use the North Indian chart. Now, right. it'll be the same. It's in Leo in both charts. Yes. Now, a small secret from the tradition is, small, small. See the seventh house from this to see what attracts people to you to get married. So the seventh okay. house from this Leo is Aquarius, and the Lord is Saturn, who is back here in this combination. Okay. That means that which is repelling the partner or attracting the partner is seen from Aquarius. So okay. if so, malefics will repel and benefics will attract. So Saturn okay. is a malefic, so repulsion is there. Saturn okay. always causes repulsion about the face. Oh. Okay. Jupiter, if afflicted, causes repulsion about teeth. Like that, oh. we have all these, you know, different planets indicating what you must do or not do. So generally, if Saturn gets involved in a problem, the face and particularly the cheek area is the problem. All right? 
Oh. So in this case, we do see that their excuse may be justified. All right. That's what's repelling them. But when I look at her actual appearance, I have to look at Venus and Mercury. If we, unless Venus or Mercury are significantly afflicted, we cannot say the person is having a problem with their appearance. Okay. This is a principle. Okay. Venus and Mercury, when they're afflicted, cause Brahma dosha. That means you feel as if Brahma has created you wrongly. Oh. It may not be on the, on the face. It could be another body part, a limb. Some limb you think Brahma did not do a good job. That's when these get afflicted. I don't see that they're significantly afflicted. Venus is debilitated. Mm -hmm. But how, what does this got to do with the face in Virgo? Okay. Uh -huh. I think they were, I think, although their excuse was this, I don't think she was an ugly person after her smallpox. Okay. Okay. So I didn't see any pictures of her which justified this. Maybe they hid that. But uh, and in the sense that she didn't look ugly on any of her pictures. But my point is that although this was their excuse, maybe mm -hmm. their idea of what was appropriate or inappropriate in appearance was different from what we have today. Okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. Smallpox is a very severe disease as far as appearance and scarring is concerned. It is. But in her chart, I have difficulty seeing how the Brahma dosha is happening. Mercury and Venus are not that afflicted. Okay? Oh. Yes. Even the ability of Venus is not enough for me to justify this. One Mars? What will I do with one Mars? I need something severe. Right? Uh -huh. Okay. Let's try. I think the next slide justifies something even more deeply for her. This is the same Archduchess's Navamsha. Oh. My point that I, the reason I had to, wanted to bring this up now is lest I went through this entire lecture without speaking about this. Okay. Always okay. confirm such dire predictions in the Navamsha. Navamsha doesn't work the same way as the Rashi chart. For example, in the Navamsha, if anything is in the 12th house, you will experience loss over there. And it could be okay. of people. In the Rashi, you may not experience loss of those people. Navamsha, you uh -huh. can. Uh -huh. Aquarius and Scorpio are very important houses here as well. You can experience okay. loss of people here. Okay. Now, in this chart, Jupiter is in the 12th house. For women, Jupiter in the 12th house indicates loss of husband. Okay. That implies no marriage. For men, Venus in 12th house can also give no marriage. All right? Oh, okay. Now, this doesn't happen every time. But it happens uh -huh. if that Venus or Jupiter does not lord the first or seventh thousand in Navamsha. Okay? Okay. If it does lord, then no loss. But if it doesn't, okay. then you may be unmarried. Okay? Okay. Yes. All right. So even if the Lagna is supporting like 12th from Venus is fine, but still if this is there, it will not happen. That's right. So that means there's a person, if 12th from Venus is fine in the Rashi chart, you will have love in your life, but doesn't mean you will marry them. Oh, okay. Yes. And, to, and Namamsha is the criteria for marriage. Okay. Oh, okay. Or you could marry them, but then you don't live together. Oh. Yes. Or some other restriction is there, which is unusual. Oh, okay. Like you're only together to make babies and then you are separated, even though you're married. Oh. That can be there when these Venus or Jupiter go to the 12th in Navamsha. And for women, you are exclusively taking Jupiter. Yes. And for, women, and for men, exclusively Venus. My debate, okay. what if the person is homosexual? Oh. Then what do I do? <laughs> I should say Jupiter for men then, right? And Venus for women? Maybe. <laughs> I should. I should. Okay. Let's see the next slide. Oh, now we're going a bit deeper. Oh. Hillary Clinton. She's married, right? Still is, uh -huh. despite everything. Okay? Yes. Still married. So now I'm not going to talk about getting married. I'm going to talk about sustaining marriage. Uh -huh. To sustain marriage, we needed to see second and fifth house. Correct. Yeah. 
So in this chart, let's try an experiment. I'll start with the North Indian chart. I, I, I don't have a preference here. In fact, I don't use any of these charts in regular analysis. I'm really using East Indian chart, okay. but nevertheless. So if I take Venus here, I know many people yes. use the North Indian. Venus is in Libra, Tula. And the ninth house therefrom is Mituna, Gemini. Yes. Mercury is the Lord and Mercury is here in the, in the fifth house in Raja Yoga. So the person uh -huh. is likely going to, there's a filter in them saying they should only marry powerful people. Okay? Oh. Yes. The twelfth lord therefrom is Mercury again, and Mercury is in the same place. So marriage is likely not going to be inhibited here. Okay. Uh huh. Now, second house therefrom has K2 and Jupiter. K2 is there in on sign. That should be pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, but this fifth lord here, there's nothing here in the fifth house. The lord, one mm -hmm. lord is Rahul in Taurus, and one lord is Saturn with Mars. Ooh. What's this about? Okay, mm -hmm. there's a problem here. Now, uh. so what happens? She meets her spouse in Mercury Mahadasha. Oh, it works. Hey, get, hey, what happened? Hey, Dashas are working with this, Ababaji. <laughs> Dashas are working. <laughs> okay. All right. This is something I didn't say earlier. When you're meeting the partner, it's happening due to certain Dashas. Oh, right. so this you take because of the two, it is lording 12th from Venus or 9th or both? 12th from take. Venus. 12th from Venus. Specifically 12th from Venus. Okay. Oh. But you may not have fallen in love by then. Oh. Partner may have showed up, but you didn't fall in love. Okay. okay. It could be a, 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 a shift there. Now, we say Virgo is also lorded by Rahu. Okay. So maybe it could have been Rahu Antadasha or Rahu Mahadasha also. Uh, oh, okay. Except Mercury. But one thing that happens here, so in her chart, in Mercury Mahadasha, she meets Mr. Mr. Clinton. Okay? okay. And it was in Moon's Antadasha that she falls in love with him. Oh. Mercury Dasha, Moon Antadasha. She may not have noticed him until this Moon Antadasha showed up. So many people in the crowd. When do you notice him? Now, why is Moon the one giving this? So okay. my point earlier was Moon must be associated with the 12th house from the Lagna. Yes. Otherwise, you don't fall in love. So yes. now Moon lords Cancer because it's its own sign. What's his multi corner sign? Cancer only. No, Taurus is now the multi -corner. Take Taurus the 3 degrees to 30. It's very small. But it's yes. multricona for, uh, so actually, yes, 3 to 30, yes. where is the multricona of Moon. Now, haven't yes. you heard that all planets load their multricona signs? So that means Moon loads Cancer and Taurus, right? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Does it work? She fell in love at that time, right? Ah, uh, okay. Moon loads the 12th, 12th house. There we uh, go. Now, Rahu is in 12th house. Guess what happens? In Mercury, Dasha, Rahu, Anta, Dasha, they move in together. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, any other planets? Venus lords is over here. Jupiter is aspecting, right? Okay. Mercury, uh -huh. Dasha, Jupiter, Antadasha, they marry. Wow. Okay. okay oh. Somebody will say it's seventh lord. Misty, that's why. That's why. I honestly, I don't look at seventh lord for marriage or seventh house. I look for twelfth house. The entire oh. development of this relationship will be based on the twelfth house. Once the 12th house has done its job, then I'll see the 7th house. Once they have engaged and married, the 12th house has done its job. Okay? Literally, okay. 12th house is the engagement time. Okay. Yeah. So you can notice here the entire courtship until they marry is all based on the 12th house. Right? Oh, okay. From Lagna. Because then you are experiencing it, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Now... Although 8th Lord Saturn is joined a debilitated Mars, notice this, the 8th Lord from Lagna is Saturn, Saturn is ah. joined a debilitated planet, Mars and Cancer. That should be bad for the length of married life, right? We said length of married life? Yes, 7th right? seven, seven house second from that. Exactly. But one thing it doesn't show here is Mars is exalted in the Navamsha. Okay? Oh. So that means that married life will be very long. Okay? Okay. So what happens here is they have currently been married for 43 years. 
Okay. Okay. How would you see this affair thing which Bill Clinton had? Should we see it? Let's see the next. I mean, is it possible to see from her chart? This is the next slide. We'll see now. Okay. I. Why did I pick up her chart? Because of this only. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Now, problem. That same Jupiter which gave marriage, remember? Jupiter and Tadasha? Okay. It is also in second house from Venus. See that? Okay. Yes. And if you notice, it's with Ketu afflicted by Rahu. Uh -huh. So there's a problem. So from the beginning of marriage, second from Venus, how much are you sustaining the marriage physically? Okay? Okay. From the beginning of marriage, there can be problems. Okay. As it is already, without knowing the Dashas, I already pointed out that the fifth Lord from Venus is, is either Rahu in 12th or Saturn joined Mars. I don't okay. care if Mars is strong or not. He's a malefic. Yes. There will be Tamas entering the marriage. Tamas will be there. Oh. Second house from Venus is loaded by the same Mars who is also joined Saturn. Okay. Both ways. Yeah. Okay. And Mars and Saturn come together, ouch, right? There's a problem here. Mm -hmm. Now, if I take Rahu, Rahu might cause scandal, but not okay. always. He could cause scandal. And if he's in Taurus or Vilibra, the scandal will be about women. Yes, correct. So the fifth house from Venus is showing scandal and the second house from Venus is showing infidelity. Oh, okay. At least it shows separation. Some type of separation is happening. Sometimes something is physically separating you from each other. This person is going out and being with another woman instead of you. That's physical separation, right? Okay. Yes. So that is my initial step that I would examine with this chart. Now, after that, if I saw this, I would start wondering, can I be sure that this is going to be infidelity or something else? How do I know? Mm -hmm. So what to do, you calculate what is called the Upapada. All right? Oh. Now, Upapada we did earlier. This, this Upapada is brilliant because you can actually differentiate between how the separate, what is happening exactly, what are the problems exactly. So in this mm -hmm. case, I count from the 12th Lord, 12th house, sorry, till the 12th Lord Venus, that's 6th. So 6th therefrom becomes Pisces. So the spouse mm -hmm. is from Pisces. Okay? Yes. How do I know? Because he will have his lagna and trines to this. His lagna is cancer, I believe. See that? Yeah, cancer okay. is in trines okay. to Pisces. So now, second therefrom is going to decide what is happening in marriage. All right? Oh, okay. So because second from Upapada is the sustainer of the actual marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second therefrom is loaded by, there's no planet here, it's loaded by Mars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Mars is over here with Saturn in Cancer. Mm -hmm. If the second lord from Upapada is joined a malefic, okay. it implies that Tamas is entering the marriage. If Tamas enters the marriage, means the bondage of fidelity is being broken. Oh. Yes. Now, okay. uh, here's something interesting. In, uh, when, when, uh, in India, we do the marriage ceremony. Yes. Marriage ceremony in the Vivaha is done in front of Agni. Okay. Okay. Fire. And uh, that is the Sumangala and everything is done with that. Now, what happens is because Agni has become witness to the marriage. Yes. They say that if one party in the marriage has an affair. Yes. Then they have actually broken the marriage right away. Oh. And when that happens, Agni Deva starts seeing the new affair as the potential marriage. Okay. And as a result of which, he starts little by little killing the old, the previous partner. Okay. So when a man has an affair, it's possible that his spouse is going to start falling ill. Okay. Uh -huh. And part, and this this happens regardless of the ugly whether the puja was done or not. So this applies for all marriages. Okay. Because the reason that the entire agni ceremony is done to begin with in India is to pacify agni. 
Okay. So that the so that the person is not so that the relationship is going to have the strong enough bond so that where if there should be any separation between the couple because of infidelity that it okay. is not having too severe an effect. In fact, we just want to avoid the infidelity to begin with, right? Oh. So Agni is worshipped to deal with this problem in marriages. Okay. Okay. But otherwise, if some people, if you, if somebody has an affair. And they do see that their spouse's health following that starts little by little falling ill. It is okay. time to consider a remarriage ceremony. Oh. Otherwise, Agni is going to just little by little chop at the, at the body of the prior spouse. Because they have, they have understood that you are now with somebody else. Okay? Okay. Yes. Now... So now, so this, this entire issue is what we have to start bringing up at this point. Okay. Now, um, so that's why I said when Tamas enters the Upapada, this is like infidelity. It's related to this, this entire philosophy. Okay. okay. That's why when you read the textbooks, the same combination which is supposed to be for, uh, for giving ill health to, the, to your spouse are the same for infidelity. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yes. Okay. Now, let's let's take that a bit further. All right. Mm -hmm. If you have malefics aspecting twelfth from moon, it is possible that somebody else is looking for your spouse. Infidelity again, right? Okay. So Mars is having graha drishti on the twelfth from moon. In this case, in addition. Okay. What happens now? Watch. Watch the, watch the timing. Mars is Lord of Second from Venus and joins Saturn. First thing that happens, they've been married for maybe one or two years. Mercury Dasha, Saturn Nanta Dasha. Husband rapes a campaign volunteer. Oh. Okay. Say Saturn, right? See that okay. Saturn? No. Oh. Who else is associated with Second from Venus? Jupiter's there, Ketu is there, Saturn is there, Mars is there, Rahu is there. Just catch any of these Nanta Dashas. Ketu Ketu, husband affair. Ketu Mars, oh. husband one night stand. Venus Mars, husband's hallway groping. Venus Jupiter, Lewinsky scandal. The only decent graha was Jupiter. He decided to expose everything. Oh my God. In fact, when Jupiter showed up, he, sh he gave the entire history. Everybody started coming up with their accusations. My God. All right. And if you actually look at his timing, you will notice that in between these phases, Mercury, Saturn, Mercury, Ketu, Ketu, there's very little time in between. Yes, it's the, the very small periods. Yes, these are very small periods in between, yes. And I, I decided to skip a few because I thought I was, it was difficult to figure out which Antadasha it was happening in based on the statement. So I skipped a few, but there are more. And you can all add them up to these planets which are associating with the second from Venus. Okay? Easy, right? Too easy, in fact. Just a second from Venus, and we started predicting everything. Correct? Mind-blowing, this is. <laughs> Let's see the next slide. This is his wow. chart. <laughs> the man right. himself. Now, I want to see what is, it, what is that seed in his mind about relationships? Ninth from Venus. Rahu is there in Taurus. Okay. His father passed away before he was born. Okay. Yeah. In those nine months that he was in the womb, he passed. The father passed away. Oh, okay. And um, you, and then a mother married somebody else. Oh, okay. And we see here that Rahu is in Taurus, and uh -huh. the lord of this sign is Venus joined Mars. Venus joined Mars in the three, three, seven, or eleventh houses is a combination for infidelity. Okay. Will be having infidelity. Okay. Okay. When that combination is there. So in this chart, we do see that that is the case. Okay. All right. We do see that is the case, and we see that the seed for that has come because of some ideas he has from his father. All right. uh, that okay. same Venus Mars in third seven eleven is also the ninth Lord from Venus. Yes. 
all right? Connected, yes, yes, so they're yes. connected. And Rahu is aspecting making it very severe. It's quite big, it's huge, yes. all right? Huge desire. Okay. You catch the charts, Tiger Woods, Bill Clinton, any of those big scandals, you'll catch most likely Venus and Mars have a say in that, all right? Wow. Sometimes they'll be joined, sometimes they'll be opposite each other, okay? Okay. Yes. But which house is important also? Now, um, in this chart, second house from Venus has Jupiter, which is good. It's very strong, right? Okay. And don't ignore that the Lord is Venus joined this combination. So that's, even if marriage is strong, he's keeping it strong, but he's doing something else as well. Oh. As if to keep it strong, he's given a free pass. Uh-huh. Peculiar. The fifth house from Venus is loaded by Saturn, and Saturn is in the ascendant in Maranakarak star. Yes. Now, Maranakarak is bad, but if it's in Cancer, it's good. <laughs> okay. This is, if Saturn goes to Cancer, and is in Lagna, or 10th, or 5th, they say a great politician who has been born, who can convert everything that is bad that happens into a good thing. Wow. They can change the minds of people and manipulate them to think something good about them. Oh, okay. How on earth it happened that people still like Bill Clinton after his entire relationship history was exposed is a pure miracle. Yes. How it happened that he could go through that entire situation that he did as president and still be likable today is only because of one planet, Saturn. Okay. Okay? So, and being in the Lagna, he is responsible for causing the Saturn trouble, and he in cancer, he's also responsible for changing the minds of people to think it's okay. Okay. And in the Lagna, he is the one who is breaking and remaking the marriage every day. He's the one who's doing it. We said uh -huh. Venus, fifth from Venus, is supposed to be important for the future of the relationship, right? Yes. So here it's in Lagna. He's yes. responsible. And he will oh, okay. be in Marnastana. He's also breaking it. He is breaking it. He recreates it. He breaks it. He recreates it. And he does it every day. He doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. anything you touch, whether you take fifth or second, you will find one problem, right? Second Jupiter is oh. there, but the Lord is that Venus with this dire combination. The fifth they're from, it's the, no planets. The Lord oh. is Saturn over here. Right. Both ways there is an issue. Yes. It's, oh, had it not been in cancer, the marriage would have broken. Oh, okay. Yeah. Jataka Parijata. Saturn in cancer. Great, great Raja Yoga. Okay. Ah. 